Hey guys, let's brush up on our audio for film knowledge. Okay, so it's right after New Year's for me right now, so I'm getting back into the swing of things and actually trying to relax a little after all the hustle of the holidays. And I, this year, I made the mistake of booking so much work for myself that I ended up having to work on both Christmas and Christmas Eve. So this holiday season was pretty rough for me. So yeah, uh, today I figured we could just talk about some more academic film sound terms. To be honest, I'm partially doing this topic this week because it's easier for me to just sit here and talk about it than to do another style of video. But this this stuff is also great if you're interested in doing audio for film in any way, or even if you just want to be able to talk to film people and sound educated and informed. So today I thought I'd talk about diegetic music, which is also sometimes called source music, and how it compares to incidental music. So what is diegetic, also known as source music? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Diegetic music is just music that exists in a film that might be heard by the characters in the film. It exists within the actual setting of the film. So whenever a character walks into an elevator and you hear elevator music, that could be an example of diegetic music because the assumption is that the sound is in the film because it's a sound that the character is hearing and it's within the actual setting or location of the film. Similarly, when a character walks into a store or a coffee shop and you hear music that's usually played in coffee coffee shops or in a shopping setting, that's usually going to be diegetic music too. And often you can hear that the music is treated differently when it's diegetic. So as audio engineers, we actually will often edit and process diegetic music very differently from other music in a film. So it's often EQ'd so that it loses some frequencies to make it sound like it's coming from, for example, the store sound system or coming from far away. Reverb might be added to it to make it sound like it's within the same acoustic space as the character. It's stuff like that. So with diegetic music, you might see a character go Christmas shopping, for example, and you'll hear Christmas music as soon as the character enters the store. Or another example that I've noticed a few movies using lately, and it's actually a great tool to show perspective, is when a character is listening to music using headphones and the music stops or gets a drastic EQ cut as soon as the character removes the headphones, or vice versa. When the character puts the headphones on, the music becomes much more full and loud. But basically, if you're watching a film and you assume that some music that we, the audience, hears is also heard by the characters on screen, screen, then it's diegetic music, also known as source music. So some examples of diegetic music include Guardians of the Galaxy. So whenever Star-Lord puts on his headphones and then plays a song and we are then listening to the song with him. So for example, they even do this during the opening credits scene. Baby Driver has a bunch of great examples of this. And I mean, if you haven't seen Baby Driver yet, go see it because they do some really good sound and editing stuff in that movie. And I personally loved that movie. But anyway, Baby Driver uses it in almost the same exact way as Guardians of the Galaxy, since whenever Baby plays music in his earbuds that we then hear with him, it's an example of diegetic music. And they also use it in the opening scene of the movie.
And the 2016 Deadpool movie also uses diegetic music in a similar way, with Deadpool listening to music on a cassette player. But I probably won't include that clip so I don't get flagged as inappropriate and to limit how much cursing exists here on my channel. I don't want to get in trouble. Okay, and maybe one more example here before we move on, but a lot of the cantina scenes in the Star Wars movies include diegetic music, since if there's a band playing in the cantina, then we are hearing the music and so are the characters, since it's being performed in their fictional world. And in this one, you can also easily notice what I'm talking about with the editing changes based on perspective. So when we see the band playing the music, it's much louder and fuller than when the camera then focuses on characters in the crowd. <laughs> On solo, I'm Captain of the Millennium Falcon. Okay, so that's diegetic music. And just so we have a full understanding here, we shouldn't mention diegetic music without defining the opposite of diegetic music. So the opposite of diegetic music in a film is non-diegetic music, which is also called incidental music or sometimes extra diegetic. Incidental music is simply any music that we hear in a film where we don't assume that the music is being heard by the characters or existing in their physical world at all. Incidental music exists solely for us, the viewers. The characters are supposedly not hearing it at all. A good example of this is a lot of big orchestral musical scores that happen to underscore the action in a film or any training montage scene. Those characters are not listening to that same song for an entire, sometimes multi-day long event of training sessions, and we are not supposed to assume that they are. So, some examples of non-diegetic, aka extra-diegetic or incidental music include Star Wars is a great example because they have so many fighting or action scenes that feature their iconic orchestral music underscoring the action, but we know those characters aren't hearing that music. The whole battlefield isn't listening to that music in space. <laughs> Another good example is the training montage scene from Rocky. So he's running around training in different locations over a period of time with no headphones in or source of music visible, but one song plays over all these clips. We aren't supposed to assume that he's listening to the song with us. The song is there for the audience and not for the characters in the film. And you know, sometimes films blur the lines between diegetic and non-diegetic music. For example, we might see a handful of scenes with multiple cuts with a song, non-diegetic music in the background, but then the sequence ends in a scene where that song is being played on the radio or on a record player. In that example, the music starts as non-diegetic but ends as diegetic music. So that's basically it for my description of diegetic music in film specifically. And just if you're interested, you can look more into diegesis as a concept because it's not only used to describe music in film, it's also a concept used for storytelling and writing, and it's used in a very similar manner in musical theater. So for example, in musical theater, music is usually non-diegetic because the characters aren't really aware that they're in a musical, and they're singing and dancing in a way that wouldn't normally happen in that kind of an environment, in the story's setting. But in musical theater, a song is considered a diegetic number if it's existing in the actual narrative. So for example, if it's a play about the production of a musical or creation of an album, then a song is a diegetic number if the characters are performing the music for that production that they're making in their world. It can be assumed that they're aware that they're performing the music, and because that's a part of the plot. So anyway, diegesis isn't only used for music and film, and it's an interesting concept to look into if you want to also learn about how it applies to theater or writing or storytelling. So anyway, that's all I have for you guys today, and thanks for watching. I hope that you guys liked this video, so please let me know what you think in the comments below. For today's question, I want to know what topics and audio for film would you like to see here on my channel? So please leave your answers in the comments below. So thanks guys. As usual, if you like this video, please tell your friends about my channel, watch my other videos, or check out my Patreon. I'll be coming out with new videos every Wednesday, and thanks for watching.
Okay. Okay, I'm done. I'm out. Bye.